Anyway, lots of exciting things happening, but there's uh, something much more exciting. I, I, I want to bring on Dr. Uh, Michael Brown here because uh, Dr. Brown's a good friend of mine. Let me, let me tell you who Dr. Brown is. He holds a Ph.D. from New York University, and that Ph.D. is in Near Eastern Languages and uh, Literature. And he's served as a professor at numerous top seminaries. He's also the author of more than 25 books, and he's spoken around the world. He has debated Jewish rabbis, gay activists, agnostic professors. He's debated them on college campuses as well as on live television and he hosts the nationally syndicated talk radio show in uh, called the line of fire the line of fire i've had the great pleasure of being on that show with him before dr michael brown he's written a blockbuster bestseller his latest book it's entitled outlasting the gay revolution and where homosexual activism is really going and how to turn the tide outlasting the gay revolution how apropos michael brown thank you for being on freedom friday today it is great to be with you, Carl. Thanks so much. Yeah, believe it or not, we've actually hooked up. We've tried this several times, and due to technical difficulties, we've never been able to pull it off. You'd think that radio would be a, a lot simpler than you and I make it. Yeah, especially at this stage of the game, but glad to finally connect. I know, I know, I know. I've been doing this for years. You've been doing it for years, and both of us, I mean, we just couldn't make it happen. But anyway, it's happened today. Listen, this this, this new book is just near and dear to my heart because— long before the gay revolution really hit us full in the face. I could smell it coming, and I know you could too. And I've been preaching and teaching that this day was coming, and people, you know, they rolled their eyes at me several decades ago. But here we are. And and I wanted to start with this and get your opinion on it. On WND Today, there was an article that states that there are now dozens, dozens of legal experts all over the nation, a lot of them coming out of law schools and major universities, that are calling for the ignoring of the Supreme Court, Obergefell, uh, you know, so-called gay marriage ruling. Now, I've said that from day one. It's, it's an illegal and unconstitutional law. And they're saying now exactly what I've been saying and you've been saying and others, that it's not the law of the land. It's not. There is no law of the land that uh, institutionalizes gay marriage in all 50 states. And so, yeah. I mean, so go ahead. You, you talk about it and then connect that to your book. Yeah, absolutely. Professor Robert George, Princeton University, and a host of celebrated legal scholars say, we are standing on the shoulders of James Madison. We are standing on the shoulders of Abraham Lincoln. How did Lincoln treat the Dred Scott decision in, in the Supreme Court? Ignored it and said the court does not have the right to do these things. So I wrote Outlasting the Gay Revolution immediately before the Supreme Court decision. But we've known for years there's going to be this major decision. It's going to be a 5-4 vote, and Kennedy is leaning in this direction. So the book is written knowing what was about to come. And the book does two things. First, it explains how gay activism has within itself the seeds of self-destruction, and the more victories it gets, the more it's going to shoot itself in the, fit, in the foot, and the bullying will backfire. And then secondly, it weaves through the book eight principles for long-term cultural change. Principle number one, never compromise your convictions. Right. Principle number four, refuse to redefine marriage. So these scholars are now giving further uh, further fuel for our fire. And, and, Carl, this is a major thing. I mean, this is a national movement that's being launched, somewhat really unprecedented in our nation's history. It's not time to throw in the towel. It's time to push back. And that's why I wrote Outlasting the Gay Revolution. Exactly. And, you know, thank you for writing that book, and thank you for all the media you're doing and sounding the trumpet on this, because, um, because as I said, you know, I've been talking about it for years, and others have too, but sometimes we feel like we're just swallowed up in the forest, and it's great to have a book with your magnitude and a person with your credentials, and now this, you know, dozens and dozens of legal experts are on board. They get it. Lawmakers are getting it. Uh, attorney generals and governors and lieutenant governors are beginning to get it, and this is this is what it takes. You know what it reminds me of, Michael, is do you remember some years ago, I guess it's probably eight or ten years ago now, but when uh, the Ninth Circus Court of Appeals, yes, I said circus, uh, when, when they determined that we could no longer say under God in the pledge, and they just, they issued that ruling, and that, and that same day, Congress said, we're not going to follow that. They signed a resolution. The Hillary Clinton signed the resolution. States and schools and everybody was saying, we're not following that law. And what happened, the Supreme Court had to intervene to save face for the federal courts, and the Supreme Court finally had to knock down that ruling. And I don't think it was because they, they uh, disagreed with the Ninth Circus Court. I think it's because they realized that 
this th that event was showing America that when the Supreme Court issues a ruling that's that's insane, we don't have to follow it. Right. They were doing that within their own system. But the fact is, the Supreme Court doesn't make law. People say, well, what about Loving versus Virginia with interracial marriage? You know what the Supreme Court said then? That one of the reasons this is still marriage is because these people can procreate. Because a man and a woman can procreate, whether it's a black man and a white woman, that's immaterial. The fact is, once you redefine marriage, you render it meaningless. All four points that Justice Kennedy gave in terms of why marriage should be redefined they work just as well for polygamous. They work just as well for polyamorous. They work just as well for adult incest couples. And you better believe all these people are lining up and saying, what about us? What about us? Yeah. So now others are catching on. And listen, I know with a book like this, in a sense, it's getting out. It's having an impact already. But there's also the slow burn effect because, you know, many of our colleagues, they're discouraged. They, they're throwing in the towel. The ship has sailed. The culture wars are lost. And I said, what are you talking about? Know, this Supreme Court decision is the Roe v. Wade of our generation. It's the wake-up call. It's the galvanizing call. And as we rally together in the right spirit, but as we rally together, we will see a pushback. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and uh, listen, I've got so much more I want to say about this, and I want you to really have as much time as possible. Let's do this. We've got about a two-minute break. I'd like to take this break, Dr. Brown, and then come back and just really hit this heavy. Is that all right with you? You got it. We okay. will do it. Okay, good deal. Folks, listen, my guest this afternoon is Dr. Michael Brown. His book, Outlasting the Gay Revolution. Outlasting the Gay Revolution. Where homosexual activism is really going and how to turn the tide. I'm going to tell you what. You know, Dr. Brown, <laughs> you and I were talking off, offline a moment ago, about decades ago, I and you and others, we, we, we saw this. We felt this coming, and we've been warning people, and you wrote the book before it happened, the Supreme Court ruling. You, 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 you knew this was coming. And it's interesting, Michael, uh, just two years ago on this radio station, I, I've interviewed John McCain, Senator McCain, uh, Rhino McCain several times, and uh, the uh, Mike Bates, the owner and manager of the station, he has a program in the afternoons, and he was interviewing John McCain a couple years ago, and we've got the recording of this, Michael. And he asked this was a couple of years ago. He asked John McCain, he said, look, with this current uh, uh, Supreme Court we have, I mean, we could actually, I mean, we could actually have gay marriage as the law of the land. And John McCain said, oh, no, that'll never happen. No, this Supreme Court will never pass gay marriage. And even if they did, the Senate would step in and nullify it. We would, we would fight it until it was absolutely uh, taken out. That'll never happen. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> and two years later, not only does it happen, but have you heard one peep? out of the Senate or anybody? I mean, even these Republican presidential candidates, every, almost every one of them are saying, you know, it's law of the land. There's nothing we can do. But, Michael, there's no law of the land with this so-called ruling. There's no law. Of course there's no law of the land. There, the Supreme Court can give their interpretation of something, and then the other branches of the, of, of the legislature then have to say, okay, let's craft this into law or let's differ with this, and, and there's no constitutional basis for it. Thankfully, uh, four of the candidates that were running did sign a pledge saying we won't recognize it. Yeah. Senator Ted Cruz, Governor Mike Huckabee, I think uh, Rick Santorum, and one more, they said we won't recognize it. And, and see, here's, here's what has to happen. We must look at this as a long-term issue. Many Christians have a kind of myopic, short-sighted view, we're out of here any minute. Now, if Jesus comes first, wonderful, yes. then we don't have to debate or discuss anything. Yes. But I firmly believe that if Jesus doesn't come first, we're going to see the tide turn in America. The gay bullying, those who used to be bullied, have become the bullies. Those who are in the closet want to put us in the closet. And I give example after example in the book. When you read out last in the gay revolution, your jaw kind of drops because you think, I, I can't believe this has happened in the last few years. And we've got the Kim Davis thing, going to jail and People losing their business for simply saying, I can't bake a cake for two men or two women. I now pronounce you husband and husband. Sorry, I, I can't take the pictures for that. People are losing their businesses and being fined. This is going to wake up the church. What is meant for evil gets turned for good. Sexual anarchy cannot be sustained long term. It breaks down family. It breaks down society. And the celebration of gay activism, the celebration of homosexuality in our culture today is part of a larger culture of sexual 
anarchy. So principle number three in outlasting the gay revolution is sexual purity trumps sexual anarchy. And then the, the war on gender. Come on, who, who would have believed we'd be celebrating a disturbed person like Bruce Jenner who needs oh, our yeah. prayers, needs our help, celebrating him, trying to become a woman? Who would have believed we'd see in, in elementary schools in San Francisco removing of boys' rooms and girls' rooms so everything is gender neutral? Uh, who would believe that, that we'd see uh, Target stores in the, in the toy section? You know, boys' and girls' toys, because that's making gender distinctions. This is social madness. We've gotten to the point now where perception is reality. If a man believes he's a woman, he's a woman. If a white woman believes she's a black woman, she's a black woman. And this cannot be sustained long term. So throughout Outlasting the Gay Revolution, I give example after example from the news from, from a few months ago, from a year ago, example after example, and then throughout give hope, give courage to say, hey, if we keep living right, if we keep raising our families right, if we keep basing our lifestyles on scriptural principles, if we speak the truth and expose the lies, we'll be the last man standing. Instead of feeling that we're, we're just beaten down and what are we going to do, we need to feel sorry for others, take the highest moral ground, and stand fast. And, and Carl, you know the attacks you get for this, but almost every day I get the most vile, ugly things said about me, posted on social media, death wishes that, that are, would turn your stomach, they're so ugly, simply because I dare suggest that we can outlast this. So we have hit a nerve here, my brother. Yeah, and, and I think they know that. And, and you suggest in your book, well, you, you state in your book, and, and then you, you, you give the evidence for it, you believe that, that this radical uh, agenda push is going to overplay its hand, and, and that's going to be the destruction of it. And uh, explain that. Yeah, so you have, for example, in the city of Houston, that the gay activist mayor, Anise, Anise, Parker. Anise Parker, with her city attorney, David Feldman, Push through this LGBT uh, bill, <laughs> including the transgender bill, the, yeah. the bathroom bill, even though the city council was overwhelmed with calls saying don't do it. They pushed it through. Then pastors and others organized a petition drive simply saying let us vote on it as the general public. They needed 17,000 signatures. They got over 50,000 signatures. The city attorney just voided it with no authority, voided them. They're not valid. They're not on the right line voided the signatures, and then Anise Parker said, I am subpoenaing these men, the pastors. I want their sermons. I want anything that mentions homosexuality. I want their emails. Next thing, tens of thousands are rallying. She had to withdraw it. You've got the state attorney general saying, what in the world are you doing? You've got things like that. Kim Davis goes to jail. Who ever heard of Rowan County, Kentucky? Who ever heard of Kim Davis? Next thing you've got a rally with Huckabee and Cruz and others from around the nation rallying together. Uh, you get one of these Christian businesses put out of business because they say, sorry, I cannot participate in a same-sex, quote, wedding. And next thing on GoFundMe, they got ten times more money coming in. Christians are saying, enough is enough. We want to be gracious towards everyone. We don't want people beat up or hurt because of how they identify. But you are not going to force us to do these things. So as each new victory comes, here's what we learn. It's not enough for us to be accepting. It's not enough for us to be tolerant. We must celebrate homosexuality. And you remember the book of Esther. Haman wouldn't be happy until Mordecai bowed. As long as there's an organized church saying, we don't embrace this, the gay activists will not be satisfied. Yeah. What they're going to have to understand is that Mordecai is not about to bow. Yeah, that's good. That's brilliant the way you stated that, and that's a great illustration. And you know, and and I have said it like this. I I've done a lot of interviews on this topic for years, and and I have often said, look, if gay marriage legalized gay marriage, and again. It has not been legalized in all 50 states. There is no federal law mandating all 50 states honor gay marriage. But let's say that this Overfelt ruling somehow, you know, did that. If all this was about was about two men wanting to call themselves married or two women wanting to call themselves married, it's still an abomination. I would still speak against it. I would still be brokenhearted. But I could stomach it if I had to. But the problem, Michael, and you know this and you've written about it in your book, it's that's not what this gay marriage ruling was about. It's a foundation. It's a platform for the radical gay agenda. And you're saying, and once they start down that road, and they have, it's they're going to overplay their hand, and they're going to create a backlash against themselves. Yeah, and I give example after example of quotes from gay activist leaders from 
20 years ago and more saying, all we need to do is get the marriage laws passed. Once we do that, we've won our victory. Now it means this is what's taught in the schools, and you can't object exactly. to it. Now it means this is what churches are going to have to embrace. You can't object to it. Well, again, the greater the victories for gay activists, the more they're defeating themselves. And if we'll stand strong, stand fast, the right spirit, the right way, we will see the tide turn. It seems impossible and natural, but I also believe in a God who brings great awakening and shakes nations. I'm ready to see America shaken. Yeah, me too. Me too as well. I think what may shake uh, America is when they start teaching the mechanics of homosexual sex in sex education, because they already teach the mechanics of heterosexual sex. And now since it's, quote, legal, why wouldn't they? And they will. You know they will. And that's going to shake this nation to its core, I do believe. Listen, there are school districts where it's already been taught. Uh, they teach the various things, and then they rate them as to which is the most sex, which is the most dangerous, and which is not the most dangerous, and so on and so forth. There you go. The more you get confused kids, caught up with all gender identity issues, and on and on. At a certain point, at a certain point, even America, soaked by the media and saturated by all this false information, at a certain point, people are going to stop drinking the Kool Aid yeah. and say, yeah. "We wanted to be nice. We wanted to be tolerant." But this is not but this what is, we signed yeah. up for. This is way too much, yeah. In, in fact, we're way out of time. Dr. Michael Brown, I'll have you back on soon, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless.